Welcome to the final prototype of our water wheel. This has been a project that's lasted, I think, more than two years now. I've been slowly upgrading it, and I think this is probably the final iteration. Uh, this summer that's just passed, we had a really terrible drought. The water level in the river was so low that I think the water wheel was actually coming to a full stop. So we need to make some huge upgrades and rethink how we were doing things. So when we moved to the farm, we actually had, we actually found this old boy. This is an old uh, Davies farm pump. It's designed to actually run really fast on a little um, motor, like a petrol motor, an electric motor, which you usually actually mount up the top here, and the belt goes down and spins this. Um, but of course, the whole point of the water wheel was to not have to um, shackle ourselves to petrol and all of that. So we thought, hey, maybe we should try putting this pump on, see if it does actually operate at a lower RPM. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Turns out, it does which is awesome. You can see here, pumping away. So this thing needed a lot of love. I needed to uh, clean out the back end here, which, which is where the gears are. Um, it was just sludge, just water and oil. It was pretty disgusting and it smelled pretty putrid. Um, so yeah, I gave that a flush with diesel and meths. Uh, cleaned up the outside a little bit, it was a bit rusty. Um, it's still not the best, it could do with another paint job, but um, yeah, it's serving its purpose now. Um, had to put new buckets on the pump, so the buckets are in here, uh, going back and forward. It's basically just a big plunger that sucks water up from here. Sucks it up into this reservoir, creates pressure, air pressure in here, and pushes it out the back here. And the buckets go back and forward, back and forward, which are powered by this, which is turned by that, which is turned by that. So yeah, it took us a little while to figure out the optimal um, arrangement of gears here and the sizes. We were limited in what we had to use. Um, this was actually on the farm, and to buy something like that now, something of that diameter, which I think is about 55-ish uh, centimeters, that is, um, you're looking at like 150 bucks. So I thought, well, you know, we'll, we'll work with what we, we've got. Uh, the only thing we bought was this, uh, in terms of the, uh, the pulleys. Uh, that was, I think, about 50 bucks. So you can see how much pulleys cost nowadays, which is crazy, and of course the belt. Um, but yeah, apart from a few parts of this old boy, um, this was basically free. And you can still buy these new nowadays. They're, they're so robust that people still use them. Um, this one was made probably about 100 years ago, maybe 80 years ago. They started making them in the early 1900s. Um, but yeah, it was a little worse for wear, but I cleaned it up and it works, which is awesome. So over here we have just a ball valve so I can shut this off, so the line here it goes all the way up the hill, top of the hill, over the farm, and to the tanks at the top. Um, I can shut that off um, if I'm doing some maintenance on this so I don't empty the lines completely. Um, this here is my attempt at a sediment trap uh, to trap all the sediment because when I'm clearing out the lines from here in this pressure release you can see just a lot of muddy water pour out. So this is obviously like the filter isn't the best on the end. It's just a little stainless steel filter to keep out the leaves and stuff, but it's obviously pulling up dirty river water and all of that heavy sediment settles down in the lowest point of the hose here. So the idea was to trap that sediment here, but I don't think this is big enough to actually catch the amount of sediment that's um, probably just swishing back and forward there. So that's something I probably need to revisit um, or better yet, build a better filter on there. So there's no dirty water and sediment coming into here, which will mess with the rubber washers and plungers and stuff in there. This costs probably more than I had hoped, probably quite considerably more. Um, the current setup here, not too much, but it's all the iterations before that, all of the welding to create, um, you know, support frames and stuff for my haphazard, weird uh, arrangement of, um, of pulleys and whatnot. So yeah, ignoring all of those educational costs, um, all up, I say I could probably replicate this setup here, excluding the pump, of course, because that you can buy those new for about 2500 which is pretty expensive. So excluding that freebie that we found on the farm, the rest of this here, which was just, just small welding jobs and uh, some some woodwork, um, I don't know, probably, probably under $500, which isn't bad, 
because it pays itself off pretty quickly when you consider that to pump up to the tanks and fill the tanks probably costs about $20 in petrol. Um, and we've got quite a few stock on now, so they go through that quite quickly. So yeah, it's, um, it's paying itself off as it runs constantly and it's dripping as it should to lubricate the rod. One thing I need to do is just make a little channel in the wood here so it doesn't keep it permanently saturated and rust this. To tighten the belt, I've put this turnbuckle in. So this whole thing pivots on this bolt. And there's another one on the other side. So when you turn the turnbuckle, it tightens and rotates this whole thing back, which tightens this up. So if I need to pull the belt off for any reason, all I do is loosen the turnbuckle, rotate that forward, and the belt slips off. Another major upgrade is the brace and the drive shaft. So I welded this brace together with a simple T at the end uh, to hold the bearing block on each end. There's another one up there. And we used to have a 20 mil diameter drive shaft, which broke a couple of times. And sometimes I'd find the water wheel down river, but thankfully it hadn't gone off into the water before at the end. So yeah, that drive shaft is now 350, or sorry, 35 mil wide. And I've welded a brace on the end. I think before I just had a <laughs> the drive bar going through and sort of haphazardly bolted on. Hey, it was all a prototype, it was all education, it was all testing to see if it could pump up there and it can and now it's doing it perfectly. So hopefully this means that this is sort of the final iteration um, and we won't have to make too many more amendments. That's a little, uh, a little roof I made for it. I just need to put a little, a little bit of siding on here just to protect the pump a bit. We also dammed up the river a little bit, just on that far side, because the water was sort of draining off there, just to allow a little bit more water to pour down this natural weir here, just to guide it. And that really helped. And we widened the fins. Before I just had some folded tin. It was about 150 mil wide. And now we've got fins that are about, uh, I think 30 or 300 mil wide. We also widened the weir, which is the natural channel in the bedrock. It only needs to be widened a few centimeters just to accommodate the bigger fins. But it really helps because now it's form fitted to the fins. So it just ticks along doing its thing. And it has been doing this for a few months now since we added those bigger fins. That drought was pretty bad, but at least it gave us an opportunity to test it in the worst possible conditions. And it worked. It actually pumped up two liters per minute, I think it was, which is well over what we need. I think that's a 3,500 liters a day or something like that. And we needed, um, we needed just a little bit less than that, which is pretty good. So we know that it works in the worst conditions when the water level is at its lowest. Ideally it would be a breast shot, it is just an undershot water wheel, but it's enough power to get what we need for our stock. So yeah, the only thing really to add now is maybe something at the front to catch any big branches that may come down in a flood. Just a little guide there, a little uh, sort of guard rather that is maybe bolted to the bedrock that comes up maybe half a meter or so just to catch anything big because branches have been caught in the water wheel before and all of that force of the water pushing on the branches can bend the drive shaft which is not fun or even snap the drive shaft off which has happened before but only on the thinner one hopefully the thicker one will actually hold up to much more force if that happens again But yeah, we love coming down here and just enjoying the tranquility of watching it ticking away, doing its thing.
So up here we're about 15 meters above the water wheel, above the river, and the pipe runs underground up here and up to those tanks on the hill just there. And here is a picture of success. Water 20 meters up, 200 meters away. You have no idea how satisfying it is to see that piddly amount of water come out the top of that tank. <laughs> so it's actually turning the water wheel quite fast at the moment because we've had quite a bit of rain. So there's quite a bit of water coming out the top there. But both tanks are full, which is awesome. It was pretty nerve-wracking over the summer during the drought. When this lot were a bit thirsty, we had to pump up every day with the petrol pump whilst we figured out what upgrades were needed for the water wheel <laughs> to achieve that. But it works, and it is super satisfying. You're welcome, guys. In winter, we'll probably take the belt off the pump on the water wheel so it's not pumping up because we don't really want to flood our land too much. A little bit of water on the paddocks in the drier months are nice, but not so nice in the wetter months. You can't see them from here, but there are maybe a dozen troughs on this property. And they are all gravity fed by these tanks on the hill, which is fed by the water wheel now. <laughs>